Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So, since last episode, I have done a bit of decorating around this area. You'll notice that I've kind of added some skystone. I still have a little bit more to do, um, which is basically the blocks that's going to break up the monotony of the skystone. I still have to add those in, um, or the detail stuff. But uh, you can see some of this, I broke up the floor a little bit with some skystone. I added some paths from open blocks. And then a mix of the basalt and stone uh, speliothems, <laughs> speliothems or whatever. Um, and then I, I used iron lanterns for lighting. Just kind of spread around like this cave is like found and, you know, lit up with uh, like some rustic looking iron lanterns from rustic. Um, and went through there. This part is just stone at the moment. We're going to be working in this area today a little bit. Um, and then, of course, our screen and... And then over here, all of our system stuff, um, XP system and all that good stuff. Um, one small thing that I did change, you'll notice there's a, there's a pipe that's connecting into this portable tank from right there. You know, the back one is where we're extracting from, but right there, there's a pipe that connects in. Basically, the mob crusher, the essence wasn't taking priority pumping out from there, basically because the fluid ducts were filled, and so it was... They, all the all the essence was moving over to this from here, and uh, so all the essence it was prioritizing the essence from the converter. And so basically, what I did, we can actually pop back. Um, we'll pop back through here, I suppose. Okay, if we go through here, let me turn this on. Uh, you can see I've added another pipe here that's basically just pulling out. Um, I removed the servo from the bottom of this, and it's just pulling out the essence. Because this was like totally backed up. It's pulling out the essence, sending it through, and it's going into another fluid dictionary converter that's converting the essence into liquid XP, and then it's going into the tank. So basically that essence is just going to get cycled through and then get turned to XP, and then from there it can make essence. That way it doesn't back up, because what happens whenever it backs up is it no longer collects the essence, and it drops experience orbs, thus creating lag. <laughs> basically is is the issue so i went ahead and changed that up um whenever i actually logged on after logging off after we set that up uh my portable tank was completely drained of xp and so this was only running whenever it got some xp now right now the only thing that's running is blizzes and the reason being if we pop up to the ae system and we take a look here at our rods we have a lot of basals blitzes and blazes Blias, I noticed uh, whenever I logged back on that I had accidentally turned that off before logging off. So I didn't have a whole lot of Blizzrods, so I'm running that uh, to build up our stockpile on Blizzrods. So anyways, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and pop up here, I guess. Um, what we're going to be working on today is actually utilizing some of this XP. Uh, by the way, I did want to make mention, um, there will be a server tour coming up before too long. I decided to postpone this one to episode 100. Um, just because we have less bases, you know, and a lot of newer players, and it gives everybody time. So episode 100, uh, give or take an episode or two, you know, depending on what we're working on, and, you know, I don't like stopping in the middle of uh, middle of a big project or something. Um, depending on what we're working on and everything, but around episode 100 will be the next server tour. So I'll post something um, up on the Discord around episode 92 or 93, um, so you guys can sign up your bases if you're interested in that. Um, so anyways, what we're going to be working on today is utilizing some of this experience and we're going to get into, we're going to set up a system for enchanting. I mean, uh, currently we're wearing quantum, which can't be enchanted by normal means. It actually cannot be, uh, enchanted by industrial foregoing either. So I did test that, but it cannot be enchanted through that. I'm not sure about astral sorcery. That usually bypasses like everything, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but anyways, what I want to do is I want to start off by getting a Disenchanter. And we're actually going to go for the Draconic Evolution one. Um, it's probably the most powerful one. It doesn't require uh, much of anything. Um, it's just a very, very powerful uh, Disenchanting system. Not to mention it gives us a really good excuse to automate a couple things. That is the Draconic Core. Um, we haven't set up much in the way of automation for this. So let's go ahead and get ourselves... Um, how much dracon uh, draconium do I have? Okay, I've got the us. Let me make a recipe real quick because I've been storing this stuff as dust. We're going to say that if you take a dust, then it's going to make a uh, draconium ingot. 
go ahead and teach it that and let's see the disenchanter we're also going to need to teach it how to make uh, elite plating i think we've already done i'm not for sure i'll have to check uh the dislocator we should go ahead and teach it this because we're going to need to automate these cores so we might as well just go ahead and get this stuff automated right now genetics processor uh, is made like that and we're going to go with these circuits because they're free and they craft like instantaneously and we always have them stockpiled so it's just better um actually i don't think we've automated elite plating we have a lot of it um but we have not automated it okay let me dump in these recipes it's really not too difficult we are going to have to do a little bit of machine automation for that um, but honestly getting this automated right now the cores it's just going to save us time later on, so we might as well do it. And that we should be able to just smelt um, in the furnace there. Okay, so if we take a look at the Elite Plating, we're going to have to teach it uh, DU Plating, which we, I don't think we've done that yet. Let me see, what all plating have I taught it? I've taught it Advanced Plating. Um, I have not taught it DU Plating, I've taught it Basic Plating. Okay, so we're going to teach it... Uh, the DU plating is just uranium-238 and sulfur. Um, uranium-238 we do not have in stock, but I believe that's what we have, if I recall correctly. It's what we've got over here. Yeah, we do have it right here. And I'll tell you what, uh, what we might do, if you recall, we've got uranium-238 oxide being created as byproducts from this. Um, but we've just been exporting it all for lead. So what if instead we stored it in a drawer and let it build up and then just voided it? Because we really don't need, um, we don't really have much use in, you know, just sending it all to make lead anymore. Um, so maybe if we tossed it in, like right there, and I'm going to remove the uranium-238, and I'm going to go ahead and grab a bit of this stuff. Just so we can store it away. I guess I'll leave that in there. And that way we can store up some of the byproducts, you know, from uh, from that system. I need to put a little ghost door in there. But, uh, yeah, so now if I dump this into there, then I can easily teach it the DU plating. So there we go. And then I'm going to grab one of these. I can't remember if I've got any or not. And then the plating, uh, the elite plating here. We're going to need boron ingots, which I think we've got those stockpiled. Um, and then we need crystal binder, okay? Um, crushed rotocrostite, we've got pulverized obsidian, we've got, but magnesium and calcium sulfate, we do not have. Magnesium, um, we actually have magnesium ingots. Yeah. Um, so really what we'll need to do is crush this up for part of it. And so what we'll do is we'll just tell it, uh, if you take one of those, and which ways can I do this here? Manufactory. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just send it through the manufactory up here. We'll go with that because it's fast. And we'll say that makes one of those. Okay, so that part's taken care of. And then we need to teach you how to make the calcium sulfate. Now this has to be done through the crystallizer. 666 millibuckets of calcium sulfate solution. Um, and this is created through chemical reaction or the fluid enricher. There's calcium, well... That's not going to do us any good, calcium sulfate. Uh, the chemical reactor, sulfuric acid and fluorite water. Uh, to do this, sulfuric acid is water and sulfur trioxide. Like this part's easy. The fluorite water is just water and crushed fluorite, which we've got that. But, but doing the sulfuric acid um, actually takes a fair few more steps. Um, basically, it's melting down sulfur, combining it with oxygen, combining that again with oxygen, uh, to get our sulfur trioxide, and then we combine all that with water to get sulfuric acid. Um, we've actually got enough elite plating right now. I'm going to hold off on that because we're going to be tackling nuclear craft. We're going to be setting all that up. In, but I don't even have the room built or anything like that. So um, if we go back to our core, our draconic core, uh, we can teach it this right here. Okay, that's how you make that. Now, plutonium, we do not have automated. The elite plating, we do not have automated, but we do have a lot of that. The rest of this is all automated. Uh, draconium, I mean, we don't have a lot, but I can go mine for that any time. So let's go ahead. We'll drop that right into there. And let's order one of those. And then our disenchanter. 
We are going to need a couple bookcases, and then we should have everything that we need. So right over here, I've got uh, two Bane of Arthropods, four books. Is that all the... I, I think I've got more... Yeah, I've got more enchanted books uh, downstairs. So <laughs> what I was going to say is all I have is Bane of Arthropods. Anyways, there is our Disenchanter from Draconic Evolution. And then we're going to want some stuff to apply enchantments. Um, and I think what we're going to go with is, let's see, there's a lot of options within this pack. Uh, of course, you have your standard enchantment table. You have the enchanter, adds enchantments using experience, fluid, and energy. And let's see, we have the enchantment applicator. And then the enchantment factory, ender enchantment table, um, auto enchantment table. Um, I think I want to get the uh, in uh, the enchantment applicator. This, um, it uses essence to apply from books is the way that it works. So, let's see, I'm going to need a couple more anvils. Okay, so there's that. Um, and then the enchantment factory, we're going to go ahead and snag this as well. This is basically like an enchantment table that uses essence instead of experience. And I'm not sure if that's going to complete any quests. There's one for the enchantment extractor, which we pretty much bypassed that. Uh, let's go ahead and craft that. Just because it's something that we're probably not ever going to need. Um, I could set it up. Um, if, I, if I recall, it requires essence. Oh, actually, that one does not require essence. You know what? Actually, that one might be better <laughs> than the disenchanter. Um, I'm still going to take the disenchanter. From Draconic Evolution. This one requires experience. I was thinking this one required um, essence. And so I was just going to have the Disenchanter. We could just use it with XP. But it actually doesn't require. It just requires power. Um, and then a book, of course. So, yeah. We'll, we'll use that one. Then we'll use the Disenchanter for decor. My bad. <laughs> My bad. So anyways, we get a loot chest. There we go. And we got a hang glider. Okay. Cool. Super useful. And then what we're going to do, let's get ourselves um, our Fluidux, because that's how we kind of got power moving over, so we'll just grab those. And I've got 18 of them, that should be plenty. So let's pop down here to the mob farm system. And what we'll do is we'll set up our Disenchanter, just like... Um, this one you get better benefit if you have books and uh, bookshelves and stuff. But we're just going to have it for decor, we're going to set it up like right there. So... Well, yeah, we have a disenchanter. <laughs> and, uh, oh wow, it takes Terra Steel level to break it. Um, and then we've got the enchantment factory, the applicator, and the extractor. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the factory setting. Oh, we'll put it right here. That's what applies, kind of works as an enchantment table. Um, I can't recall if it needs bookshelves or not. I want to say no. So it uses three buckets of essence to do a uh, level 30 enchant. So I don't think that it actually requires bookshelves. I could be wrong. We'll find out. Um, and then what we're going to do is put our enchantment applicator here and our enchantment extractor here. Then we'll just connect these up with signal and play of fluid ducts. That's going to move our essence and our power um, into these machines. And then we just have to bring this through um, a little ways. Okay, so we'll just connect that up like so. And then it can move Essence over here. It should be able to keep these filled up pretty easily. Um, and it's 32 buckets, basically. And then this one just requires the power. It doesn't need the Essence uh, for the Extractor. Man, that's that's so much better than that one. I was thinking, because that one does damage, unless you have so many bookshelves. Um, and then, in addition, it does require some XP, which, you know, I was thinking, well, this took Essence, so we kind of balance out. No. <laughs> these just don't look very magical. Which has always bugged me, but, I mean, neither does this, or these, or, you know, any of that stuff. Those, so, I guess it kind of works out. Okay, so now that we've got that in place, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves an Ender Bookshelf set up from Cyclic. These things are amazing. Um, let's get this right here. Um, these are going to require some purple blocks. Um, there's also this. We're going to get that. I really need to get uh, Chorus Fruit automated before too long. But um, anyways, our Ender Bookshelves. Let's get... Uh, there's 24 of those. That's actually a bit more than what I need. And then we're going to get ourselves... 
one of these. And these are basically uh, storage drawers for enchantments. Okay, let's pop down to our drawer area real quick. And let's see, books. Uh, we do have quite a few enchanted books. Now, I don't think ancient tomes will work in this. I think it's just, just these books. But that's fine. That's most of what we're going to be coming across anyways. So let's pop down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our bookshelves. And we're going to do... Um, I think I could actually do our ender library right there. And then we could just set up all of our shelves like this. And I may end up adding more. Um, I'm going to start with like that. And then we'll see. I mean, I can always expand them out or up or whatever, if need be. And I have I have some extras made, so that's great. Oh, I don't know. Because, I mean, after I do, like, the protections, that's, like, all of that layer. I feel like maybe if I stuck, like, a crate over here for, like, the weird ones. That we're not going to get as much. That might be a good idea. <laughs> we'll get a crate. And I'm going to set it up right there. Um, and that's for, like, the weird enchants. So, for example, things like, um, Save Luck of the Sea. I don't really, probably not going to be getting a whole lot of that. Feather Falling, Thorns, uh, Save Efficiency, Unstable, Punch. I don't know. I'm going to toss all those in there for right now. <laughs> And then we'll we'll see here in just a second. Okay, so let's pop back up and let's grab ourselves. Let's let's actually pop down here because I've got a bunch of armor and stuff. So let's grab ourselves an iron helmet, iron chest plate, iron legs, iron boots. So we've got a full set of armor. And I'm gonna get a man of steel sword. That's mainly what I'm looking for is like sword enchants and then armor right now at least. And let's pop down. And the enchantment factory. Okay, let's start with that. Let's toss in our iron chest plate right there. And we've got unstable 2, thorns 2, and unbreaking 3. And I actually forgot to bring some books down here with me. Could also do like a little AE system. Those tend to work very well for enchantment storage and stuff. Let's see. We've actually got like protection, aqua affinities. Uh, there's protection. We actually don't have that many enchanted item th items though, so... And let's put that there. That's going to store, like, books and then our different uh, stuff that we're enchanting. Okay, so if we take that chest piece and we put it through the enchantment extractor, let's toss some books in there. You can see it's going to pull off the book, uh, the enchantment. So we've got Thorns 2, Unstable 2, and there's Unbreaking 3. And then we can just grab our enchanted books. Then we can toss this back in here. There we go. We've got Unbreaking 3 and Last Stand 2. And I guess I should be enchanting multiple things at the same time. Let's do that. Uh, there's Decay and Knockback 2, Blast Protection 4, Last Stand 2, and Protection 4. Last Stand is actually one of the enchants. We got two Last Stand 2s, which is the best uh, that it can be, and that's actually one of the ones I was looking for. So, Okay, and let's grab some of these, like Protection 4. Okay, I know we're probably going to have a lot of Protection 4s. I'm only going to do top tier. You know what? I might only do top tier enchants. So maybe right here we'll do Protection 4. Okay, and then anything that's not top tier, we'll just dump into this thing. So right here, we've got Blast Protection 4. We'll put that right there. Um, we've got, let's see, Last Stand 2, which is a top tier. We'll put it right there. And what's nice is, you know, I've got a Last Stand 2 right here. If I take this and I right click here, you'll notice it goes in there and you can see there's a 2. So I have two last stand twos. Now it doesn't actually store the items, so if I click, it doesn't it doesn't draw it out. But if I take a book and I right click there, there we go. We got a last stand two. So it stores the enchantment, but not the you know not the actual item. But it does give the books back whenever you store it. You'll notice I have four of them there. So it is quite handy, in fact. Okay, let's dump these in there for right now until I get how I want to sort all this out. Uh, you know, figured out and everything. So let's throw those into there. There's another last stand two and breaking three. I think I'm breaking three is the highest rank, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, awesome. I think a lot of these are actually top rank, but I've got to I've got to play around with it and see. Um, unbreaking. We can also right click there. It's just it's easier if you have the Ender Library because it's going to sort everything out for us. So there we go. 
And you can add hoppers or, you know, whatever item transfer system you prefer. Probably not hoppers. Oh, there's a mending. That's kind of nice. We actually have a lot of last stand twos. So we've got five of them already. It's crazy. We did get a protection three book, which is going to go down here. Uh, fire aspect two. I'm pretty sure that's top tier, if I recall. Yes, it is. Protection three. Fire protection four. Uh, there's XP boost three. Fire protection four. Yeah, so I'm, I'm basically, give me a little bit. I'm going to do a bit of enchanting. How are we doing? Yeah, see, we're doing great on XP. It's not even like scratching it <laughs> uh, to do all this stuff. So um, give me just a little bit. I'm going to just do a bunch of enchanting and breaking stuff down for just a minute. And then I'll be back here in just a bit. Okay, I've been enchanting for a bit. As you can see, it's all filled out. We are going to have to add more. Um, what's funny is I never got a projectile protection ever and you can see i've enchanted a lot i got unbreaking 325 of those um just a bunch of enchants i got two reaper fives um so right now i have looting three slotted here eventually that'll be projectile protection and i'll move looting um elsewhere but uh we got a bunch of mending we got soul bounds we got all kinds of stuff here so just a huge a huge assortment of stuff and what's nice is then we can go in and we can just sort the us and we can go through and say Fire protection, there's two of those. There's two more. There's two protection threes. There's two protection threes. We can go into our enchantment applicator and just put these in together. Like that. And then fire protections, there we go. And then protections, or fire protection threes, there we go. And then we can just take this and right click, right click, right click, right click. And there we go. So, and you always get your books back, so. Um, and then I've got just this stuff in here, so. Um, but really, really easy system. <clears throat> I mean, you could take it a step further and automate it so the, the items get cycled through between the factory and the extractor. It's just, I don't really have need of that, but. Um, so, a couple things I want to test real quick and see if they have been fixed. Uh, first up, if we go in here and we go to the Experience Obelisk. Um, or not the Obelisk. We are eventually going to make an Obelisk, but we can't just yet. I want to get the Experience Pylon. We're going to grab that. And then I also want... See, these things used to be bugged. I'm not sure if they still are or not. Uh, let's get ourselves some ink sacks. Let's get the Printing Press. And then let's get the Typesetting Table. And we're also going to want a bunch of those. Let's get, let's see, there's a whole bunch of slabs. There's our typesetting table. Okay, so let's pop down to the mob farm. And let's see if we can set this stuff up. Let's see if it works. So the, uh, let's try the experience pylon first. And I'm going to put this right here. And the thing is, it'll uh, collect orbs always on... Um, Whenever I run the mechanical user side of things, I don't have anything collecting experience at the moment. We will be um, if this doesn't work. But uh, this should be able to collect the orbs. And then if we say all. Okay. It's not draining anymore. It says it's capped. Okay. I see. It's not bugged anymore. So that's good. Let's pop up here and let's get ourselves... Um, Experience Obelisk is better, but Experience Pylon will do the trick uh, for the time being. So let's get ourselves another Hopper and another Experience Pylon. And what we'll do is we'll put this setting... Oh, uh, where do we want to put this at? <laughs> uh, let's put it right here. We're going to stack up Experience Pylons. And then what we'll do is we'll say drain all experience and you can see up there it's max. So it can store 1 million millibuckets of liquid experience. And we'll say all. And then this one, okay, this one's not quite maxed. Okay. So we can store our experience that way instead of carrying it all on us. Um, we are going to be using all of that XP before long. Um, and we're going to be using these enchantments. We're going to make use of that here soon. I promise. There's a reason to, to doing all of this stuff. Um, you know, I mentioned that this system for getting all the mob drops, we're going to be using that for making the primal mana. 
but we're also going to be using the enchantment system uh, for something really, really fun uh, here fairly soon. So just a heads up. But then if we take our typesetting table and our printing press, we're going to go ahead and toss these down, like right there. Uh, we're going to take our print press chases, put those right there. Let's see, let's grab like the looting three. Let me get, uh, let's grab these. And looting three, I've only got one of these. Let's take our books and, uh, oops, our books we're going to put right here. Our ink sacks we are going to put right, you have to find the right spot to click. There we go. Uh, it's right back on the back there. We'll put that right there, and then we're going to take our enchanted book, put that right there, and this takes, uh, oh, let's see, 30 levels or 40 levels? I can't recall. We'll try 30 levels. So, shift right click. Or no, it's a button. We need a button, right? So we're going to put the button right there. If we click that, okay, no, maybe we need, maybe we need 40 levels. Uh, maybe it's shift. There we go. Yeah, it's shift right click. Maybe it's not the button. <laughs> Let's pull that off. I don't think I actually need that. Um, but you can see I got an enchanted plate looting three. So we shift right click uh, the book here and it makes this, uh, this enchanted plate. And then if we put this right into there, you'll notice it's going to start running. It is working, it seems like is great and basically what's going to happen is it's going to run for a minute and then there's a book right there okay so we can right click we can pull up the book and it's a looting three book and we can use this to basically duplicate it takes 40 levels um, but it's going to allow us to duplicate our books up to three times however if we right click there you can see there's durability it's only got three durability and we can grab our looting three book but what we can do is we can take this over here to the power diamond anvil toss it in there and there we go it's fully repaired and so now basically we have infinite looting three books whoops i didn't mean to pull that off just make sure you don't uh make sure you don't use up all three of your durability just do two at a time then go repair it um, and you can have infinite so basically if we're ever about out of an enchant like we only have one i'm going to drop it in here you know basically i have uh i have infinite of everything if i don't mind using some levels for it there we go. Now we have four looting three books. And all it costs me, all it costs me now, now that I've got this already made, all it costs me is a book to make uh, the enchanted books. And then, of course, I get the book back whenever I drop it into here. So, uh, kind of useful. <laughs> and then I can just right click and put the books back on there. Okay. And then I'll just store this right in there. So we got looting three saved forever. Awesome. Oh, and it cost me an ink sack. An ink sack and a book per enchanted book. All right. And then really I could quit enchanting stuff and just use this. Like you just make the, the print presses. So, I mean, some of these are useless, like curses. I'll never use that, but I have them stored here. But, uh, but Reaper 5, that's the best one. I'm not for sure if the mob souls are used for anything in this pack, um, aside from... Well, really, you don't use it for, to resurrect the dragon anymore. It doesn't look like it, but we could get uh, mob souls pretty easy, which we will be. Um, and then, really, really quickly, let's enchant the Solium Dagger. Uh, you know, we made this before. It's got uh, like a 10% base chance to obtain mob chunks. But let's add like looting. Uh, whoops, let me, uh, let me get some of these. Let's add looting to it. Let's also add uh, sharpness to it so it does more damage. We can also add in uh, leech drains health. Let's add unbreaking. Let's add... And let's go ahead and add reaper to it as well. Reaper 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our enchantment applicator. We're going to drop our solium dagger in there. And let's toss in um, unbreaking 3. Okay, so now it's a Solium Dagger with Unbreaking 3. And then Sharpness, there you go, there's Sharpness 5 on it. Uh, there is, there's Looting 3. And then there's Reaper 5. So this thing is a monster. It's got Unbreaking 3, Sharpness 5, Looting 3, and Reaper 5 on it. And then I could take it a step further and maybe add Smite. Um, yeah, let's actually, oh wait, I, won't, I don't think I can add, well actually I think this might be able to bypass it. Can I have Smite and Sharpness 5? I don't think so. <laughs> I 
that's that's standard like normally you can't do that but uh, you have to pick between sharpness or smite yeah I think we'll stick with that for right now and what Reaper does the higher the Reaper enchant uh, normally draconic evolution tools or the or weapons are the only ones that can get mob souls with Reaper anything can get mob souls and the higher rank the enchant the better the percent chance because normally they're very very rare like with uh, with just Reaper or with just a draconic tool um, it's like one in every 2,000 kills you get a mob soul. Um, but with the Reaper 5 enchant, it's like one in 50 or something like that. You know, it's pretty often. All right, so let's do left user, and we'll let that start running. Now, right now, it's just going to be getting experience chunks. But if we pop up here, because there's no Blizz chunks. But if we take a look, we currently have three experience chunks. And we'll let that run for just a second. And then, um, as far as mob souls, we don't have any of those, of course. Now, I don't actually need experience chunks, but we will need other types of mob chunks. But if I recall, looting will boost that drop chance. So, Oh, by the way, you, I don't know if you noticed, I added a lever here. And basically, if you stand right next to the XP shower, this is just temporary. But if you stand right next to this, it's going to drop XP for you uh, from the tank. So the redstone signal will activate the XP shower. Um, but eventually, we're just going to plug it up with... Uh, Eventually, we'll have it plugged up with an experience obelisk. So, Okay, you can see that we have six experience chunks and a blaze chunk right now uh, from letting that run. And then in addition, if we take a look at souls, we have a blitz soul and a basal soul already. Like this has only been running for about three minutes to give you an idea. And it's already generated all of that. So adding in that, uh, that looting and that raper, definitely worth it for our solium dagger. Um, but I'm going to turn this stuff back off. I actually don't need those chunks. So I'm going to turn that off and turn our mob crusher back on. And there we go. That's all the damage it did to our solium dagger since it's got that unbreaking three. Didn't do a whole lot. Then we can, of course, we can just toss it in there and there we go. <laughs> and I'm actually going to store our solium dagger in here because we're probably never going to use this manually. We're just going to take mobs. We're going to toss them into here and then get whatever we need that way you know if we need souls to make a better spawner like draconic evolution if we need just a lot of spawns just super fast probably never will but if we do we can do it that way and then if we need mob chunks we can do it that way you know for uh, just kind of making mystical agriculture a whole lot easier uh, for future stuff um, but yeah i think that pretty much finishes out this area for the most part i mean we will return to this area uh numerous times of course as we as we work on work on stuff and I have a little bit more decor in here to do and then um, later on once we make an experience obelisk we're going to set that up here and there's a couple other small things we'll do with experience but for the most part I mean we've got enchanting nailed down really good we have mob farms nailed down really good uh, the only thing we can't really spawn in here I guess is like gas and stuff that's larger like that because it's only one deep um, spiders as well um, if we if the need arises you know spiders and gas and stuff like that um, we should just be able to make through mystical agriculture like there's gas essence so how much we actually need that I don't know we'll see but probably not all that much um, and actually I'm curious can we craft gas chunks no we're gonna have to farm them but that's fine we may set up a little spawner area for larger mobs or you know do something like that we'll see but um, anyways, I know it's about wrapping up point four this episode, so I'm going to end this one out here. Um, I'm pretty happy with our progress over the last few episodes, so I know it took a couple episodes. Next episode, we're going to continue on with our, our project that we've been working up to. You know, like I said, I set up the mob farm system and the experience and enchanting system for a reason. So we're going to start moving into, you know, that stuff, <laughs> all of that stuff. Uh, we're going to start moving into that or towards that. Um, so we'll continue on with, uh, I think the next step in our agenda is a bit of Batania. So we'll be hitting that next episode, um, a little bit of automation stuff. So, um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.